Doug Thompson. Welcome to this edition of Legislative Updates with John Barker of the Kansas House of Representatives for the 70th District. Most of us get our information concerning the actions of the Kansas legislature either from some form of media or after the fact as the legislation either became law or died during the process. Representative John Barker has graciously agreed to take time from his schedule to update pending legislation as the bills are moving through committee to consideration by the House of Representatives. Right after this short break, let's talk with Representative John Barker concerning this week in the Kansas legislature. Welcome to this week's legislative update. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my guest, John Barker. And John, of course, you represent the 70th district, but uh, in addition to the 70th district, you're also representing all the people of Kansas. Right. And uh, I know you're on your way back. This is Friday afternoon as we, uh, as we shoot this segment. You're on your way back from another week with the legislature. And I recall from the last time, if you weren't watching before, uh, Judge or John Barker, I know him as Judge Barker because he was with the district court and, 8th Judicial District for a quarter of a century. And uh, when you were here last time, you said, well, I go up on Sunday afternoon and I come back on Friday afternoon. And in the meantime, when I'm up there, I'm early in the morning until late at night. I'm in meetings uh, because I'm on various committees. And I'm also uh, doing a lot of reading because this job requires a lot of reading, doesn't it? It does. It, it, it's tremendous, uh, especially when you get uh, bills that have controversy. Everybody, the proponents and the opponents submit all the written testimony. They may be limited to their oral testimony in the hearing room, but we never limit them to the uh, to the written testimony. So uh, you just get just tons of it. Yeah, yeah. And this, of course, is Friday. But last night, you, I know, uh, Governor Brown, back and others from the legislature were back for uh, an event at the Eisenhower Center. What was that? I was at Brett Bear. Uh, it's a book tour, but he did his live broadcast for his news show uh, from the Eisenhower. He's a, he's a great supporter of the Eisenhower Foundation, the Eisenhower Library, and he's been there a number of times doing research for the book that he just, uh, he's got out on the, uh, for sale now, three days in January. Uh, it's about the Eisenhower and the Kennedy. The transition. transition. The transition. Uh, and I had invited some of my legislative friends down. Uh, I had the Speaker of the House, uh, four or five other chairmen of different committees. Uh, we, we came down and the uh, foundation was very kind. They gave us, gave us some tickets. And uh, just, uh, it was a different, uh, looking at half the show, not the entire show, because you know he was always cutting out to, to other reporters at different locations so they could uh, you know, give their Capitol Hill report or uh, when they had their uh, panel on the three, uh, three panels. And I was just wondering, are they all three in different locations also? So that was interesting. He, his family was there, his two boys and his wife. Uh, I thought his boys were dressed exactly the same outfit that he was. And I thought, that's, that's neat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but he is on a book tour. He has a number one book, uh, Three Days in January. And uh, so, of course, we, we got copies. And he was very kind. He signed our copies. So we have those. But it was a good evening. The governor did show up, uh, was uh, interviewed, uh, and uh, it was about a four minute, five minute interview. Uh, so we got to see that part of it. But uh, overall, it was just a very enjoyable e evening. And all my uh, colleagues that came down from Topeka uh, enjoyed it also and talked to them this morning. They were all, you know, they'd like to do that at some other place at some other time. But yeah. They happened. Yeah, and you know, it's uh, what a treasure to have right in your own district in our hometown in Abilene. Uh, to have that Eisenhower Center, it's absolutely amazing. It, it is, and you know, when you talk to Meredith Slichter, the executive director of the foundation, and the other first post personnel that work there, you know, they, uh, they are there to serve uh, the visitors. Uh, Meredith mentioned uh, last night, you know, we get 250,000 people that come to the Eisenhower. Uh, you know, it is a, a pearl in central uh, Kansas. It's a mecca where people come, especially she mentioned that the number of, of scholars that come there and do research from all over the world, and they have a vault full of classified documents that are they work every year to declassify some, so you're always constantly getting new information out about the Eisenhower years. And, uh, and you know, he's more relevant today uh, than ever, and uh, we are lucky to have him. Yeah, absolutely. And memory serves me right from my history degree. He was the administration that had the last balanced budget at the federal level. 
He, I, that is correct. Uh, I think Andrew Jackson was before him, <laughs> but uh, it's he, been he, a while. It's right? been a while, but <laughs> he uh, he was a very effective uh, president. He started the internet, uh, the interstate system. He started Nassau, so many other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm right here from from our area, and that's right. that's pretty cool. Yeah. Over the years, of course, known as have you uh, people who part of his family, people who knew him and knew him well and knew him personally. Yeah. And in Eisenhower's situation, not only was he a military leader, became Supreme Allied Commander, but then he moved on, became president for two terms. Yeah. So there's a lot of history contained within that complex at the Eisenhower Center. There is, uh, I mean, one of five five-star generals mm. in history. Uh, and that's the reason he came back after he retired as president. He went back and had someone go back to Kennedy and say, hey, I'd like to be reinstated. And Kennedy said, why? He'll always be president. And he said, they've been 35 presidents, but only five <laughs> five-star generals. Uh, that's neat. <laughs> that's and he was neat. a military man. Yes, and an excellent one, too. Yeah. A, bit, a good organizer. We've got to cut away and take a break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Legislative Updates. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with John Barker from the legislature. And if you're at home and you're wondering when you can watch this show at other times, it's on Saturday nights at 6 o'clock p.m. and 10 o'clock p.m. and again on Sunday evening at 7 o'clock p.m. So each show be rebroadcast a total of three times throughout the throughout the uh, week. Now, John, what's taking place in the legislature? Because one of the really neat things about having you available to do this, we're getting the latest news, we're getting the inside news, and I know you're involved in some committees, and we get it faster than anybody else. I mean, it's, you can't beat this coming from well, the legislature stopping here and, and, and then the going on. Yeah. Then go, going yeah. on. <laughs> uh, it has been a busy week, uh, uh, past week, last week also. I got elected uh, chairman of the uh, Joint Committee on Post Audit. I served as chair before. Yeah. It's one of the committees that we actually elect our chair. Uh, it has uh, senators and House members. Uh, and the important part is we're, we, we do a number of audits during the year, but we have one coming out uh, next Wednesday. We thought it was going to be this Wednesday, but they didn't get it done, uh, with ha which has to do with health care for school districts. Uh, when we had our uh, efficiency study done last year, there was some indication that uh, there may be quite a bit of savings in uh, joining into the state health care plan, mm -hmm. all school districts. Presently, each school district has their own plan, and it depends on the size of the district. For example, in, in Wichita, the school district actually pays for the, um, the hospitalization uh, for the individual and the family plan, uh, which is a little unusual in other districts. Uh, so we're looking at that. That audit will be out uh, on noon uh, next Wednesday. And then uh, at 1.30, after we, re we release the audit, they're going to appear in front of the Educational Budget Committee, which is developing a new formula uh, to report on if there is savings in that uh, uh, audit. So uh, there's a lot of anticipation of everybody wanting to get that audit as soon as possible so that we can actually start working the appropriations bill when we come to funding of education that will be a part of it. Would you anticipate that uh, when you consolidate the districts into that, that the uh, group rates are going to be significantly less than what they're individually paying? Or you just don't know yet? We just don't know. Uh, uh, the efficiency study that was conducted last year indicated there probably is some savings, quite a bit of savings is what they've indicated. But you just don't jump at that. So we asked our legislative post auditors to go in. I think they went in for like six months. We've had three or four auditors working on it. and. Wednesday, we will know what the re report says. Yeah, you know, you know, John. I was in um, Manhattan today for court, and when I was driving back, I was listening to the K State uh, network, and, mm -hmm. and students were talking, and they had uh, they had an open mic, and the guy, and I don't remember his name, but uh, he was the senior uh, uh, custodial mm -hmm. representative for the. Uh, Kansas State University and he was talking about what's trying to work through that they need to get their salaries up and they're working on it and then he was sort of talking about he said well the professors need increases the te teaching assistants and on down the line for everybody and I was sitting there listening to this and I said man where does where does the money come from for all of this John and because you guys are working on some things right now when you start talking about it, where does all the money come from well it comes from the taxpayers uh, you know, that's, uh, that's how we fund the government. Uh, 
you know, as you know, last year the governor did a 4% across the board cut for higher education, a number of other things, but not K through 12. Uh, the hospitals got cut. Uh, and we're looking at trying to put that 4% back in. Uh, but we have a shortfall now. Uh, it's, uh, it, you know, it's difficult. Some, I know the Senate introduced a bill to cut $300 million out of, uh, out of K through 1, K through 12 education. Uh, that didn't fly. Uh, so I don't know how exactly, but normally, it, you know, we're, we're still in the process of gathering information. We need to, what, to know what the consensus revenues are, what the revenue is coming in, what the expenditures are going to be. Every department, of course, comes in to their appropriate budget committee and decide, and the budget committee hears their, their testimony on where they're at, how much more they need, if they need more money. I know we've done the judicial budget uh, hearings. Uh, so. We're just kind of—it's a—it's a process, and and a lot of people say, well, you should just be able to go in and do that in the first week. Well, you know, you need all the information, and uh, and that's what we're doing now. We're gathering the information. We'll have the post audit report. We'll have the uh, the budget committees reporting to the House Appropriations uh, on what each of the departments are asking for, and when all that comes together, then we actually start forming a budget bill for the year. That's the only thing that we're required by the Constitution to get done every year. And that's a mammoth job, isn't it? It's a mammoth job. They, uh, I mean, there's, it's, it's usually, you can't imagine where money comes from and to the state and where money goes out to the state. It's, it's, it's a large bill. It takes, uh, it takes uh, almost a, a, a math teacher to understand it, and I'm not sure a, a math teacher could. Probably not. All right. But we have good people. Good research people that that help us with that, and they're professional. They've been there. They're nonpartisan. Uh, and when the people come in, they get elected to a legislative position, and they come in. Of course, they're coming in with their ideas. They want to make a positive difference. Right. And I'm assuming that everybody that comes into that works very hard to be able to have an understanding of it, uh, and then be able to be involved in the process to make the best decisions at the state can make. Is that, that that's find true. that to be true? And that's what we do the first couple of weeks in all of our different committee hearings is bring in the Department of Revenue and those experts to kind of bring everybody up to speed. I mean we have uh, 45, 46 new people. Uh, people are serving on, on appropriations that's never served on appropriations. So we need to get them educated first um, and what some of the things that we actually can do and some of the things we can't do. Yeah. Because of federal guidelines, or, or you, can't, you have to be careful when you're spending federal money. So, yeah, it takes a little time to get, to, you know, get your feet on the ground, and and they're doing a great job. The freshman class are really enthusiastic, uh, and they're going to work hard. We only got a few seconds before we got to cut away to break. But what's the general consensus on uh, the new administration? Pleased oh, or displeased? I think it's they're pleased. Uh, you know, there's uh, there's uh, it's nice to hear how things are going. I, I'm sure he's blunt, uh, but there's probably a, a little anticipation and or apprehension in, in D.C. because he does business a little different. But overall, I think uh, his his ratings are going up. I think the people like it hmm. because he speaks in their language. Yeah, he he is uh, pretty straightforward with it. We've got to cut away and take a break. Be right back. Welcome back to Legislative Updates with John Barker. John, we're uh, going to take a look at some of the legislation that's working its way through. Mm -hmm. I see on uh, House Bill 2074, what is that? Uh, 2013, uh, there was a bill passed about concealed carry and, and open carry uh, of weapons. This would allow you to carry them anywhere unless the facility put up security like the county buildings, uh, municipal buildings, hospitals, uh, college campuses. So, but they put a moratorium on it until July 1st of this year to give those uh, agencies ample time, what they thought was ample time, to, to have that security established. If they don't have security, then you would be able to, to carry a firearm, a concealed cut firearm, within those buildings. And 2074 uh, was introduced, and it would eliminate that moratorium, or continue it indefinitely, exactly what it does, so that you, there would be a bar in the future. Uh, I had a hearing on it this week. 
Uh, there was probably 250 people that showed up in my hearing. We have a tremendous amount of written uh, testimony. Uh, the hearing went great. Uh, when you get that many people in a room, and, and, and both sides are passionate for their perspective, or their, their side, uh, we were able to have around 32 people that were proponents to continue the moratorium, and a number, I think it was only eight or 10, uh, opponents to the bill. We had uh, professors from K-State, KU, that were not uh, testifying as a representative because the Board of Regents has indicated that they don't want anyone to take sides in their official capacity because it's a political issue and they don't get involved in politics. So we, we had that hearing um, for about two hours. Uh, it was very, very informational. Uh, we had college students. We had both sides. Of course, we had the NRA and the State Rifle Association. And then I allowed them some additional time to submit written testimony. At some point in time, uh, I'll have to decide whether we work the bill. Uh, and when I say work the bill, is actually open it up for amendments, discuss it in the committee, and then uh, either pass it out or not pass it out. Uh, then we had another bill uh, that uh, was House Bill 2150, which has to do with KU Hospital. Um, and they came in and testified, the uh, director of the hospital and uh, their chief of police, they have their own police force, KU does, uh, about uh, they would like to be able to prohibit the carrying of concealed guns or guns in general uh, on the, in the hospital uh, area. Not just the hospital, there's several other uh, facilities related to the hospital. Well, uh, are they set up with the, like the metal detectors so that you, uh, that you have a reasonable certainty that if the sign's up that somebody has made certain that others aren't carrying in firearms? Not yet. Uh, they have, I think, one of their main entrances is, but uh, they have, I think they testified out of 100 entrances to those different facilities. The cost of uh, you, and, that would be amazing. And it? it would be, and they, uh, the chief of, uh, of their police department testified, he'd been there, I think, 35 years. Uh, you know, he has a policy that he walks people or nurses or everybody on shift work to their cars and back if they feel there uh, some danger or had some apprehension about walking. Uh, so it's a bill that uh, would uh, extend it. Uh, my question to them was, why are we doing this for KU Hospital and not other public hospitals? Uh, but it was a KU bill, but, uh, but other pu public hospitals like the one in Abilene uh, would be open up after July 1 to carrying guns inside. The question would be what happens in emergency rooms you know, emergency rooms historically are pretty dangerous because people come in injured uh, from different types of accidents or domestic, and uh, maybe one uh, family member goes to jail, the other one goes to the emergency room, and then the family shows up. And so we're, we're looking at all aspects. Sometimes alcohol-related offenses. Well, and, you know that yeah, to be true. Yeah. So we've talked about that and uh, had another bill, 2145, which is a fi uh, bill that was, uh, uh, strike that, it's uh, 2081 which uh, conceal carry and public employees who are allowed to carry, um, the liability on part of the city, it eliminates any li liability in the city. This has been, uh, uh, it was introduced by, uh, I think the Attorney General's office. Now is this just for municipalities, uh, counties, or does it also extend to private employees? No, only public, public employees. Okay. And, and, and what we're talking about would be a situation, somebody's uh, carrying a firearm legally mm -hmm. and with a permit knocks it out of his holster while he's working for the city and mm -hmm. it goes off and hits another employee. Exactly. So then the, the city would not be liable. The employee the may have the right. responsibility. And that may cause that employee to think about liability insurance on his own, uh, on his own. just like we have it on car insurances. Mm -hmm. We have liability. So we, we were at that also of 20, 21, 30, uh, 73 is the uh, racetrack gaming facility that would open up uh, the three tracks in the state of Kansas, uh, the one in Wichita, one in Camp Town, and the one in Kansas City for uh, dog and horse racing. It will be heard on Monday and Tuesday in front of my committee next week. And uh, you should come up and we should film that together. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> well, maybe we will. Well, maybe we will. Uh, but uh, it's uh, it's going to be uh, an interesting hearing. Uh, the opponents are going first, and then the proponents on Tuesday. Uh, I think it looks very favorable. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Yeah. So. You're expecting a lot of uh, each side uh, being I, very adamant in their positions. Very much so. Uh, it, you know, the Humane Society will appear, and a number of other organizations. So. Listen, this is a good time for us to cut away, take a break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Legislative Updates. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my guest, John Barker. And uh, John, if, if uh, somebody wanted to go to this, watching this show or otherwise, wanted to go and check out maybe the post-audit report, how would they go about doing that? Just go to the uh, Kansas Legislative website, and then on the left column, it's got number of committees, and you go down to the Legislative Post-Audit. Key on that, it will bring up their uh, page and then you can go, you can look at audits from three years ago and they'll have the subjects of each of those audits school audits or whatever and uh, the late if we release the one on uh, at noon on Wednesday uh, the one on the uh, health care uh, health insurance for uh, schools it will be on there and they can pull it up and read it make copies of it same would be true for any of the bills for too. any bills it has okay. a it does have a little slot there to, to type a bill number in if you have that if not, you can go down to the respective committees and pull up and show all the bills that are in that committee. Okay, excellent. Okay. And uh, this is a reminder to you, you can catch this show on Saturday nights at 6 o'clock or 10 o'clock p.m. or again on Sunday at 7 o'clock p.m. Thank you so much for watching. 